Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah's Cross Dressing Stories. Today, I'm going to share with you Princess of Prom Night Part 2. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe now for more captivating stories and, please support me on Patreon and get early access at patreon.com slash sarah101. For the first 300 yards of the return trip, Allie maintained the ill-gotten lead, but slowly Sissy's longer stride and greater endurance ate up the differential. In the last 50 yards, Sissy summoned up reserves of stamina that Allie had never really acquired, finishing in a power sprint and almost overtaking her twin. Finally, Allie touched the stairs less than a yard ahead of Sissy. Cheater, gasped Sissy. Ha, huh, said Allie. They both laughed as much as they could, panting and grinning as they walked around a bit to cool off overheated muscles. On some mornings, a mile would just be a beginning for Sissy. Running on the soft sand at the beach made running anywhere else seem easier and she enjoyed the athletic challenge. For Allie, running with Sissy became companionship and nothing more, a mile several times a week fulfilled that need easily. After climbing back up the stairs with only slightly less energy than they had gone down, the twins found Philippa's scrambled eggs, toast, milk and juice waiting for them in the breakfast nook. They ate like teenagers, finishing all of it quickly and Sissy drank another glass of milk. Philippa watched them eat. She could tell them apart at the table easily, even when they dressed identically. Sissy enjoyed her food more, Alan had always been the finicky one. Not that they couldn't fool her if they wanted to, swapping mannerisms as easily as they might hair ribbons. Alan's facility at this disturbed her a bit, but she kept her own counsel on the subject. Your mother wants those essays done in the next two days, you too. She told me to remind you. You still need to finish your old school work. Now get upstairs and scoot, she said, grinning when the twins had finished. The twins ran upstairs to their respective showers as if they hadn't already ran a mile and climbed stairs four times as high. Chapter 2, Allie Returns, Carter Home, Santa Barbara, Late June As Alan got out of the shower, a familiar feeling of anticipation came over him. He had missed being Allie, fussing with his clothes and hair, playing at being a girl. Cecilia treated him differently then, too, in some subtle way he could not identify. Already getting into the role, he patted himself dry carefully and wrapped his hair in a towel turban, then checked his appearance in the mirror and smiled. Allie, his female identity, looked back at him. Satisfied, he donned a robe, stepped into the hallway, and knocked on Cecilia's door. She told him to enter and he found her sitting at her vanity wearing an identical robe. Your turn, sister. I did it the last time. Sissy said, smiling at him as she indicated the various rollers, brushes and curling irons. Allie smiled and began rolling up Sissy's hair in her usual style. He had become quite accomplished at it over the last few years, and she frequently maneuvered him into being the stylist. Frankly, he did the better job and seemed to enjoy it. Finishing with his sister's hair, Allie sat in the vanity and began rolling his own hair in exactly the same style. They always did it this way when playing their masquerade, one of them doing both hairstyles. While Allie worked, Sissy finished getting dressed, choosing a medium-length loose denim skirt and a blue chambray blouse. Finishing with his hair, Allie selected a similar denim skirt and top from Sissy's closet, along with some tights. Allie's skirt had ruffles at the hem and the blouse was pink with more ruffles at the yoke and down the front. Sissy could have predicted his choices, just as he could have predicted hers. You forgot the bra, Allie. Shouldn't be out without supporting your boobies. Sissy laughed. Allie grinned, looking pointedly at his sister's chest. Support what, Sissy? I left the binoculars back in my room. Sissy threw a pillow. Her cups were a sore point with her, given that mom was so well endowed, but she knew she had set herself up. You just wait, Allie, by next year, I'm going to have to get you implants to pull this off. I think mom and dad might catch on then, sissy. It may be time to call an end to this game. Sissy looked at Allie and saw the hurt in his eyes. She was always torn about whether to encourage her brother or not, but they always had so much fun and he seemed to really enjoy himself. His mention of mom and dad was also touching on a nerve. She always wondered why she preferred Alan to be Allie, and in her most honest moments, knew she was a little jealous of his being a boy. 
Cecilia, Sissy, was outgoing where Alan, Ally, was introverted. Both of them tested high on intelligence and their parents would confirm they were above average in cunning. Cecilia made friends easily but always kept them at a distance from her relationship with Alan, as if she inhabited two different worlds. She competed in almost every sport, but seemed to prefer the individual ones, where she was playing against her own statistics. Alan had few friends in any of the schools they had attended and this had always worried Sissy. I'm getting dressed and then I'll comb us out after we finish the homework papers we owe. See you for lunch, Sissy. Allie left, clutching the skirt, tights and top. In his room, Allie dressed carefully. He always took greater care with Sissy's clothes than she did herself. He pulled the tights up and made sure the seams were straight. He put the blouse on and buttoned all of the distaff side pearly buttons, then he settled the skirt around his narrow hips. He looked at himself in his mirror and grinned. He twirled the skirt, loving the feeling of the tights and he thought the pink top looked particularly cute. Even more flat-chested than Sissy, he thought, reaching up to tighten a roller. He curled up in his chair and watched his laptop connect to the house network. He opened his incomplete paper on the impact of railroads on the expansion of the United States in the 19th century and began to write from his notes. After an hour of steady work, he stopped and found himself shaking. He knew he was going to cry again. Children, like all people, define their existence by the people they know. Since birth, Cecilia had been a near-constant companion, and mom and dad were wonderful parents, despite making Alan eat broccoli and other evil things. He had never formed close friendships with other kids, content to be with Sissy and his online gaming world. Now his world was turning upside down, with the family's sudden acquisition of wealth, the move to Santa Barbara, a new school in the fall and now dad moving up to the Bay Area, leaving the family here. Alan had played dress-up games with Cecilia since he was little and always enjoyed them immensely. Sissy treated him better as Allie, and things just seemed happier. As he got older, he had started to worry about it. Sissy was growing up, and he knew Allie could not follow her. He was worried he might be different, the last thing a 13-year-old boy wants to be, especially since he liked several of the girls in his class. He had been much too shy to initiate anything beyond grunting and blushing, with the exception of when they asked for help with their computers. Then, Alan became their wizard, and had even been kissed once, right on the lips, for recovering the lost file. He blushed to even think of that, wiping at his tears and giggling at the same time, unconscious for the moment of how appropriate his actions appeared for how he was currently dressed. He didn't really avoid making friends, but just felt more comfortable with his sister or playing video games. He wanted to be a big hero, with a sword and magic shield, like he was when he was Bondar, in Mortal Quest. But now, shaking and tears running down his cheeks, it seemed better to be Allie, as he clutched at his denim skirt and then wrapped his arms around his chest. After about five minutes of deep sobbing, Allie sat up, smoothed his skirt and launched Mortal Quest in a window on the laptop. His demeanor changed to one of fierce concentration as he became Bondar, Scourge of the Nine Kingdoms, Rescuer of Fair Maidens, Killer of Bandits and the fourth highest ranked player on the planet. He was online with hundreds if not thousands of other players around the world, all pursuing the quest for character points. Since he only had an hour until lunch, he could not become entangled in any lengthy engagements. Once you made a bond with a fellow player, you kept it, or you lost all credibility. The conspiracy has lunch, Carter home, Santa Barbara, late June. Allie had just finished combing out Sissy and felt proud of his work. The twins had made a concerted effort to maintain as close to exact a match in their shoulder-length black hair as possible, and Alan, Allie, had always been the one to fuss over the styles, while Cecilia, Sissy, just desired as low-maintenance a fashion as possible. Do you think they will divorce soon, Allie? I can't stand this waiting. Cecilia wiped away an uncharacteristic tear. Dad still is sticking by their cover story, Sissy, that he is up there until he can make the business self-sustaining. And mom is saying the same thing. She just laughs and makes jokes about finally spending more time with her girlfriends at the store. I just know they are hiding something. Alan said, with watery eyes. He began removing his own rollers while Cecilia made sandwiches. Where Cecilia's hair was nicely full and blown dry, his would have more curl. 
In the pink top and jean skirt, the house staff, Philippa and Jesus, addressed him as sissy, long-time accomplices in the twins' games. Why else are they splitting us up this summer if not to get us used to them separating? I just know mom has all kinds of salon and spa torture lined up for me. She wants to bond with me and get me ready for boys, I guess. Cecilia sighed. She went on. I feel that I'm just going to let her down. Allie complained in turn. Dad already has tickets to see the Giants and wants me to try a basketball day camp. At least I can bring my computer with me. I think we both are not what they expected, sissy. Alan said, sobbing openly. Even with his emotional outburst, he did not miss a beat in fixing his hairstyle. Consuming the turkey sandwiches must have triggered some thought processes. Cecilia was the first to speak. Allie, all of the kids I know just watch their parents split up. If we are part of it, maybe we can help them change their minds. Maybe we should be what they want us to be and then work on them to stick together. Alan looked pensive, then grim. You may be right, sissy. I can do the basketball camp and absorb all the sports stuff. Maybe I can convince dad to move back. Then things can be like they were. Cecilia looked at Alan standing there, wearing one of her skirts, checking his hair in the window reflection. She just could not see him being very convincing doing a charge to the rim. Despite her upset and worry, she had to smile at the thought. Suppose we do what we do best, Allie? I'll bet mom would love going to the spa with you. Cecilia said, a smile brightening her face from behind the clouds of gloom. It all seemed so simple at first Carter home, Santa Barbara, late June. June Carter was totally exasperated with her husband John, having just hit the off button on her cell phone. Now she had to get Alan ready to fly to Oakland by himself instead of driving up with his father. At least John had chartered a jet so she would not have to worry about commercial flights and connections. Life had been so much simpler when they were just working stiffs, she thought, before both of their entrepreneurial ventures had taken off almost exactly at the same time. The last five years had been an exhausting whirlwind, with newfound wealth prompting the move to Santa Barbara, moving the kids to private school and now John living in the house up near his newly acquired firm. June had never acclimated to having the options money provided and would have never thought of using the timeshare company jet just to get Alan upstate. She felt more convinced than ever that the twins needed to start living their own lives. They seemed to have not made any friends in the new neighborhood, apparently content to pursue their favorite activities, Alan had his online fantasy game and Cecilia had her variety of intramural sports. She hoped this summer would allow them to start breaking out of their conjoined shells. They're so much alike and where they're not alike, they're like complementary halves, she mused, unaware of echoing the sentiments of many parents of twins. Separating them for a short time would be good for them, she and John had agreed. Especially for Alan, who had seldom had time to be alone with his dad, still, June worried that the twins would resent their forced separation. That's all for now, see you in the next video. Please share your valuable opinion and please support me on Patreon to get the early access. Link in the first comment.